Hello, hello, hello. I'm Simona Costantini, and I'm obsessed with helping you connect to your purpose and teaching you about all things mindset, business, podcasting, and everything in between. I realized I deserved and wanted more from this thing called life, so I changed my beliefs, healed my hurt, and made it my mission to help you do the same. I'm a recovering people pleaser turned life coach and podcast producer. I teach busy business owners how to confidently fall in love with their life and business and live it on their terms. On this show, you get everything raw and real, from inspirational guest interviews to deep dives into topics like life, relationships, business, purpose, growth, and mindset. I lay it all on the line every single time. Think of this as your one-stop shop to help you live a more purposeful and inspired life. This is the Happiness Happens Podcast. Are you ready to hear this inspiring conversation? Let's dive on in. Hey, hey, beautiful soul. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode on the podcast. I'm super stoked for this week's episode because there is so much to learn in this conversation. We chatted with BP, who's an astrologer, counselor, and high dimensional channel. She pulls on her formal psychology education in all of her work to create a multi-level soulful guidance experience. By blending astrology and channeling with traditional counseling, her clients see life-changing results that empower them to dive deep into their soul and reach their goals. Infusing playfulness and her gift of creating a safe, non-judgmental space allows her clients to feel comfortable as they receive the clarity they need to take the most aligned next steps on their spiritual or business journey. Instilling confidence and relieving self-doubt as clients learn to work with their authentic selves through the universal lens of astrology is her soul's mission. So we have so much fun in this conversation. We chatted so much about the different lunar nodes, cycles of the moon, and everything to do with astrological counseling. It was a super, super impactful episode. There was so much to learn. BP is absolutely amazing. So be sure to listen to the end and connect with both of us to let us know that you're listening and share with us what you love the most from this episode because I would love, love, love to hear. And of course, before we dive in, this is your friendly reminder to leave a review of the podcast and rate the show as you're listening. You know I'm so grateful for every single time that you leave us a comment or review. So my heart is so full with love and gratitude for you. Thank you so much for joining this episode and I hope you love this conversation because it was what's up. Hey VP, welcome to the Happiness Happens podcast. I'm so thrilled to have you here today. Hi, thanks for having me. We just had such a technological debacle. And so I'm really grateful that we get to do this today. I know, me too. I was sitting there and I was like, oh my goodness, these are one of the issues of technology. It's just Mm -hmm. like, you never know what's going to happen. And in any case, I'm very happy that we finally figured it out because this is going to be an epic conversation that I know all of my listeners are going to be so thrilled to hear. I feel like this is just, this topic is like, people just eat it up because it's so (laughs) good and there's so much to learn and there's always so many amazing insights. So I would love if you could just tell our listeners a little bit about you and how you got to where you are today. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm BP and I'm an astrologer and a counselor at the same time. And I do that as my primary business. It is my soul's mission. It lights me on fire. But background wise, I guess, where should we start? Should we start in childhood or jump straight to the career? Because that's a big question. (laughs) I would say wherever you feel like is like right before the turning point of your story and then like after the turning point. I love that. That's actually super helpful. (laughs) Oh, awesome. (laughs) Love it. So I would say mm, childhood was not spiritual is how Mm -hmm. I'll phrase it. I grew up in a pretty atheist type of household, but with a Jewish background. And now working in more of the spiritual and astrological industries, I never expected to go this route with my life. (laughs) For most of it, it just never occurred to me that this would happen. 
So I went on, you know, living my regular life. I went to college. I studied psychology and traditional counseling, uh, mental health counseling. That was my whole path until blam, spiritual awakening, the whole path changes. And I know that many people have shared that when they have their spiritual awakening, it's immediately time for the career pivot because it no longer feels as fulfilling, but I still loved it. And I wanted to figure out how to combine it in a way that felt more me and embraced more of my passions and interests. So that turn went straight to Reiki healing, just went full pivot that way and did that as my primary business after college for a few years while doing astrology. (laughs) But I felt this pull to astrology in a different way. And it just dawned on me to combine the two. And now that is my business. But the spiritual aspect always stayed pretty strong after the awakening. So when I say I do astrology, I actually focus on a more spiritual part of astrology. And that brings a whole type of feeling to it for me, a full feeling. So that's where we're at. That's really, really cool. And so when you say you bring like the spiritual side to astrology, what exactly does that look like? Like what's the difference between the spiritual side of astrology and then just regular astrology? It's a great question. There are lots of different branches or types of astrology. There's traditional astrology, there's more modern psychological astrology, and there's also a type of astrology called evolutionary astrology, which is the one that I primarily work in. And this is the type of astrology that looks at the chart, the birth chart, as if it's looking at a soul. And it takes the stance that souls, you know, exist over time, that the soul is infinite, and it takes this as the standard viewpoint, and looks at more of a soulful lens, Mm -hmm. rather than a technical lens, although I am trained in all three. So of course, the technical aspects are very helpful to draw these evolutionary conclusions. And I found on my path in astrology, doing traditional first, that there was a special part in birth charts that was extra correlated with the soul, the soul's path, the karma, sort of a a deeper piece than some of the more surface level or personality aspects of astrology, which are so useful still and actually fascinating. But I wanted to combine sort of my spiritual self with my work. And that was how I did it. And evolutionary astrology considers this particular part of the birth chart that I focus on as one of its primary (laughs) functions as a school of astrology and a couple other placements. But they're called the lunar nodes. And they're a placement in the birth chart that I like to specialize in. I didn't see a lot of others in the field focusing there. There are evolutionary astrologers all over the place, and they're focusing on multiple placements. Mm. And so I find just a lot of joy (laughs) in finding a piece of astrology that feels more whole and human focused rather than tech focused. Mm -hmm. Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think it did. (laughs) It makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. And so these lunar nodes are part of your birth chart. And obviously everyone has them because everyone has the birth chart. But so how do they work exactly? Is it like, you know, when they say like your Mercury is in your fifth house and like this moon is in here, like how, how do you identify what the nodes are? I love that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, we can really get into it if you'd like. I love it. I can drop some knowledge on you. Are you ready for that? I think so. Let me just okay. let me just buckle myself in for the ride. <laughs> right. It's about to get a little technical. So like the placements you mentioned, like a Mercury or something of that sort, or a sun sign, a moon sign, those are planets and luminaries mm. that were in a certain place when you were born, which is what a birth chart is. It's like a, a snapshot, a moment in time, a 
a blueprint in evolutionary astrology. It's a special moment. And that's how all those placements got decided. Your houses, your Mercury, your Mars, your Venus. But there's other stuff in astrology that are points in the sky at your moment of birth. So they're mathematical points between other bodies. And the lunar nodes are ones that pertain to the moon's orbit around Earth, at least from our view. And it crosses the plane of the ecliptic. I told you it was going to get technical. Oh, I'm here for this. Let's dive <laughs> yeah, on in. Two particular places. So if you think about the way the moon goes across our sky as we watch, you know, she be moving. There are two points where she intersects with our horizon or ecliptic. And those are called your north and south lunar node. And while we're talking, I may say lunar nodes or north and south nodes interchangeably, but I am talking about the same thing. And then in your chart, these locations, these points get zodiac signs assigned to them. So like you could have, you know, your Mercury in Virgo, you could have like a north node in Virgo and a south node in um, Pisces. Also, these two signs are always opposite signs in your lunar nodes because they're on opposite sides of this whole wheel and orbit situation. So they're a bit different from what a moon sign is because that's a more stationary situation. And the nodes are points. I like to work with points a lot in astrology. I think they're quite underrated. I love that. And what kind of information are you looking at or are you finding out when you're diving into these different lunar nodes? Like what are, what are, what are the points telling you? Like, what do they speak to? Oh my goodness. That's the juicy part. This Everything. Is them. Yes. <laughs> I like so much. So that's, you know, what they technically are in the signs and they also do fall into houses as well, but that's a whole other bag of worms. But each one of these nodes represents something pretty pivotal to your soul's path, to your soul's calling. I utilize them in my work to help out with feeling a sense of purpose, feeling fulfilled on your path, as well as looking into past lives and karma and challenges and obstacles. Because sometimes you can get advice, maybe from a counselor or an astrologer, about what you might do next in your life. What's next in the future? Mm -hmm. What would be best for your natural energy? And that's all well and good. And I also do that. But it's really helpful to have a why behind it, as in why would that help me specifically? Or where did that come from? And so each of these nodes represents that the north node is more of the future. It's where you're going. We'll just really do this. We're going to dive in. Okay. Let's dive in. So North Node, (laughs) out of the two, is what we want to aim for as human souls. And it feels very good when we embody the traits, the guidance, everything that has to do with this North Node mission, which is also eerily, like, sort of clear. (laughs) it's really crystal clear about these missions or steps or soul evolution. It's almost spooky how practical and literal it is. Wow. But following this North Node situation feels so good. And when we're not, (laughs) we can tell. It usually feels like something is off or you keep hitting the same wall and have no idea why. This North Node, also the word destiny is tied to it. Some people have their own beliefs about, you know, is there a fate or destiny, but it still kind of applies anyway. And the North Node, I call it a learning curve. It's what you need to grow into out of your comfort zone. Usually feels kind of scary, but Mm -hmm. brings you this inner fulfillment on a level that's indescribable. And then the south node is its opposite sign, meaning opposite energy. It's more the past life or maybe the past of this life. It's the karma. It's the cycles and sort of the reason why your soul would like to evolve in a certain way. Mm -hmm. It usually shows us our comfort zone. It also shows things that we're naturally really good at, like our gifts and just things that are easy for us. And there's nothing particularly wrong with that, except for that it doesn't feel fulfilling. 
And most of us spend a lot of our life living in our self node, in the traits mm -hmm. there, in the qualities and the habits, perhaps repeating them a lot and not really, mm, not getting where we want to go and not knowing why. And that's very normal. But there's a moment <laughs> when we're like, mm, maybe let's move on. And you switch more to your north node and you begin to grow and expand and things fall in line the right way and all your karma gets undid essentially. How is that sitting? I know that's a lot of info. <laughs> it's so intriguing. Like I'm so interested in, first of all, like how you would begin to like read and uncover this, because I just think that anything astrology or like anything energy or anything healing is just so magical, but it's kind of, it's funny too, because it's like, it's always something that you can't really put into words, like how specifically it happens. Right. I mean, like I use Oracle cards in, in my business, in my work, and it just is, you know what I mean? Like, I can't explain to people why I can, can tell someone a message and it makes sense. You know what I mean? Cause it just is. So I feel yeah. like it's a similar idea where, you know, you just, you just know how to like sort of channel that message and mm -hmm. understand by looking at someone's chart. Now, when you're looking at someone's chart and reading these different nodes, are there like, is all of the information in the chart or are there intuitive pieces as well that, you know, I don't know how to explain mm -hmm. that question. Am I asking the question properly? Probably not. <laughs> I think you're asking about channeling is what it sounds like. I think so. <laughs> is it just like and all yeah. the information <laughs> is there and like you can uncover it because you understand it type of thing? I'm gonna have to go with both on that okay, answer, perfect. which is probably a little bit unsatisfying as an answer. But yeah, it's both. It's some degree of technicality in astrology that certain placements in certain positions just mean certain things and mm -hmm. they have been that way you know for the thousands of years that astrology has been happening right so it's a blend of that and these set archetypes that come with signs and house placements all of these things are done to the the technical degree and then there's always some level of interpretation from an astrologer or counselor and then on top of that, yes, I also channel at the same time, which is the part where the guidance can become maybe softer or more specific. Mm. And channeling is just sort of like the background piece in my business. It brings in some extra guidance that maybe the chart can't display. It takes sort of the human aspect to um, look at it and then synthesize it into something practical that someone can do to follow the stuff that's in the chart um, mm. for the purpose of soul growth and of moving on your path in a direction that feels right for you. So it's a blend, I would say. <laughs> I love that. It makes perfect sense. And you definitely clarified my question. I wasn't sure how to ask it. I was like, how do, how do you ask this question? Um, <laughs> I got it. So then with through that lens and understanding now what we understand about lunar nodes, what exactly is lunar counseling? Well, that's a good question too. Thanks. Lunar counseling is the name um, of my business. And I named it that many years ago. It probably isn't a technical term, but I kind of made it up. I love it. And I call it that because it is in fact some counseling mixed with some lunar stuff um, <laughs> blended together. And in my work, you know, I do other, I don't know, astrology related things that aren't in the lunar nodes as well, but the lunar nodes became what was a favorite <laughs> amongst the people I worked with and something that um, I was able to really, really specialize in. So I just wanted to put some astro into my, my counseling business name. So there is counseling going on when I'm working, especially one-on-one -on -one when I'm working that way. I can't really get the counselor out of me. So I thought, let's bring it together. <laughs> exactly. You're like, <laughs> might <both>. as well. <laughs> yeah. It's not just reading a chart. It's also interpreting it and then and like applying it to someone's mm. life. So they may be sharing the blocks in their way or what's going on that they want some advice on. Then we look to the nodes specifically to find the advice. <laughs> oh, that's very, very cool. So you're using this like 
modality for like lack of a better words, like you're using the lunar nodes in counseling other people as like a, as the tool in your framework. Oh, that's amazing. That's so cool. I love it's that. Early both. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I've never heard of that before. Super Thanks. Neat. I do what I can. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I think it's a really incredible niche because first of all, like, I mean, I, I have friends who are astrologers and that kind of thing and never have mentioned this part specifically <laughs> about the charts. And I just think that it's super, super cool. And so essentially when you're giving someone a reading or when you're doing someone's chart for them, or you're looking through, like you're actually looking through it in a deeper lens because you're looking at different things that other people may not necessarily be looking at or picking up on. Yeah, I wanted to pick a part of the chart that isn't so popularized and maybe isn't, I think it's a bit underrated. That's kind of why I started to really like it. Like, why is nobody talking about this? And I wanted to talk about it, but kind of in my own way, because of my background and education there in counseling, that didn't feel like something that needed to disappear. Yeah. (laughs) So blending them together was really kind of my soul's path and fulfillment as well. Sometimes, hmm, how do I think of this? I wanted to give an example of maybe what a node set could look like, but that's pretty specific. (laughs) Um, I should mention that there's other placements sometimes that I look to Mm -hmm. when counseling with someone. And oftentimes I get folks too who think that they're coming in just to be told the information in their birth chart. Very soon they're like, well, that sounds like something that happened five years ago over here. And then we're talking about that. (laughs) And so it's very cool to be able to do readings while also holding, you know, know, trauma informed space for counseling at the same time. But I don't know. Where was I going with the lunar notes specifics? I lost That's really, really cool. No, I think you answered it. I think you answered it because yeah. And you mentioned, you know, that's part of your soul's path. Mm -hmm. Can you like through your own, like your own lens or how you would define soul path? Like what would that mean for someone who's listening right now? It's a good question too, because soul path can sound, you know, a certain way, et cetera. I got soul path as a particular descriptor for what's in these nodes Mm. from their actual kind of like definition is kind of the soul's path over a lifetime. But everyone has different beliefs, you know, about what a soul's path is, or if they have one, is there free will? Is it all faded? And astrology itself, and especially evolutionary astrology, takes the stance that it is to some degree (laughs) faded and that a soul path has been chosen by you, your soul, but is kind of inevitably happening during this lifetime. And when we use the lunar nodes and we look at soul path, we're doing that with the intention of making it a better time while we're on this soul path that is written in your chart, again, by you, because it's your life, your chart. (laughs) It doesn't mean that something has chosen this chart for you. It can, depending on your beliefs, but it can just mean that this is your birth chart and this is what it says. (laughs) And, you know, the growth there comes in applying it in a way that makes sense to that person at that time. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense. And, you know, as you're saying this, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I have a lot of friends and I'm connected to a lot of different people who are very much into spirituality, spirituality, astrology, mm-hmm. energy, tarot, oracle, Reiki, like everything. And I just find it so interesting that if we're all like, if you, okay, let's say you're someone who's incredibly connected to spirit and you're mm-hmm. constantly channeling messages. It's like, how can people have such different beliefs about soul contracts or like reincarnating, like all these different things. Like, isn't there like, if everyone is like connected, wouldn't you think that there's like one source, like that's telling you all the information? Do you know what I mean? I think totally. I think that's actually kind of, I don't know, like a piece of truth really, because even Mm. all the different lenses and viewpoints on some level, are similar. (laughs) There's always a common thread there that's just phrased differently or interpreted Mm -hmm. a little, a little differently depending on your life and your beliefs. But yeah, I would say there's something in common there amongst all these. I think so. I think so that, and like, 
you know, the fact that all these different modalities can like live and kind of go hand in hand together too. And they're all so powerful, like when you use them together. And I just, it always is such a side tangent, but it always just blows my mind, like how people can specialize in such unique things, but can still like, understand the perspective of like another do you, like does that make any sense you know what I mean like it's just so cool to me that like you know there's so many different ways of doing things and ultimately it all goes back to that soul journey and that healing journey it does it, it really does it always goes back to the same kind of core mission or core path just through different lenses it's one of the reasons that I actually love astrology for mm. its particular lens. Sometimes when we look at all these modalities, like tarot and Reiki or all of the things, and it can get sort of spacey maybe, or a little heady, it can feel sometimes not so concrete, just mm. depends on the person. Sometimes I've heard that, that it can feel like mm, you can bring doubt in, you can feel like maybe this isn't real or... Ah, you know, things that our brains say to us to try to keep us safe. Exactly. And astrology has been a really good way to sort of soothe that part of the brain that wants to say that maybe all this soulful stuff isn't real. And astrology is very logical. It's mathematical. It's old. <laughs> and it's something that's pretty solid. It's, you know, it's, it's just degrees and math. And mm -hmm. it kind of soothes the part of the brain that wants to doubt our experiences oh and who we are. And so I love it for that reason. It's very, very calming for someone who is maybe a logical mm. type, as I used to call myself that, like a left brainer and would struggle to deal with guilt and doubt when I would go through other spiritual modalities, which I love, but astrology is very cool in its concreteness. I love that. And you know what? It's so cool that you said that too, because I, I've seen before people who are so skeptical of even <laughs> the astrology piece yeah. and like, you know, how would you know, like, blah, blah, you know, but it's kind of like, it's so fundamentally based in logic and yeah. it's been around for so long. Yeah. And it almost reminds me like a little bit of human design in a sense, like in a different way, but like the, the logical part of human design and like where things connect and like that kind of thing. And so I just think that it's really, really interesting because it's like a lot of the times people who think that it's really woo woo, it's actually like, no, like it's, it is, but it's also not because it's also very like based in concrete, like fact. And it is fact. Yeah. It's where you were born. And that is where the planets were like period. <laughs> Like you were there, you were born, that's what happened. <laughs> and the interpretation there is what gets sometimes called as maybe um, not so real. Usually I don't hear things like astrology isn't real unless someone didn't like an interpretation <laughs> Fair. they were given, which, you know, I can relate to. If someone yeah. says that a sign you have sucks, you're going to want to say, I don't like that. That's not real. But that's not it me. Is, uh, it's just, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Charts are just information that are written down from when you're born and then what you do with that is what we've been doing for thousands of years which is hopefully using it to our benefit mm -hmm. it's not just there to be information it can be I mean it's interesting you can look at it and be like hmm mercury capricorn my communication style is like this neat but you could also use it for like an advantage if you know these things about yourself or your energy your motivations, why you might do the things you do, why your challenges are happening to you, and what you can do about it that's going to naturally feel very good for you based on these math numbers. All of that is such an asset as you move through your life when you've got that sort of like a toolbox back there of things you know are going to fit right for you because it says so in math. <laughs> Math said so. So math it's true. Said so. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I love I that. I love the math. <laughs> I love that. You know, I used to be really good in math at math until yeah. I went into a grade 10 class and I got so confused and yeah. I never, I never recovered from there after that. <laughs> That's fair. But it's funny because it's like when I first started on 
my, I guess my own soul journey and my dive into spirituality, I was always looking for the concreteness. Like I wanted like the, the scientific background, because I feel like there's a small, small part of my brain that is very much like that. But I, and then I started thinking of like positive psychology. Do you know what I mean? And like diving into that too, because it, it helps make things. And I think that, you know, if there's any skeptics out there listening, you can have (laughs) both together, like both the scientific and the spirituality can combine together. I think that's really key. I think it's really helpful sometimes too to bring both of those worlds and lenses together because to me that often feels like a more accurate portrait of our reality. Mm-hmm. It's usually not just one or the other. Exactly. Nothing really is just one or the other in most exactly. cases. So that's definitely more real too. Mm-hmm. I love that. And so you working with the lunar nodes clearly lunar is moon. So I know that you work also with the different phases of the moon as well, right? A bit, sort of. A little bit? They're kind of separate a little bit because one is a current event. And when we work with lunar nodes, usually we're talking about the ones um, from your natal chart at the time of birth. Mm. And when we're working with moon phases, that's what's currently happening at any given time. So in some ways Mm. they're a bit separate because one is, you know, one's transits, one's natal, two different things in astrology. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so how do you, how do you work with the, the moon cycles then? Do, do you? Usually not within like lunar node sessions mm-hmm. or lunar node work, because nodes are just points and mm-hmm. are not actual, like they're not the moon sign or anything of the sort. And when I do work with the current transits, including moon phases and other large planets moving around in the sky, that's usually used for more like current advice Mm. rather than lifetime advice or like personal advice. Think of it like someone says it's a full moon and they give you some tips on maybe what you could do to utilize this full moon energy to your advantage, of course, and to have the best time possible with whatever transit's happening. Mm. It's a similar in that way, where it's to, the objective is to have a good time <laughs> and harmonize with these stars and planets. But when we do it natally, it's like in your birth chart, that's a little more long-term or mm. deep-rooted, sort of a lifetime situation. And moon phases, you know, they come and go. So those mm-hmm. transits change all the time. Also, that's usually more future stuff too. Mm. A little bit of prediction and predictive astrology is also its own shebang. I do dabble in it though, of course. <laughs> a lot of my internet content is based around transits rather than nodes because I don't know everyone's nodes on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> So I end up talking about transits a lot as something that people can utilize day to day. Mm, That's very, very cool. That's why I was, that's why I was asking because I've seen you post a lot about the, the different transits. And so I thought originally, like before we even started this conversation, I thought that that's what lunar counseling was. And I was like, Oh, it's like, this is so cool. Like, and I still think it's so cool. I think it's like, it's just so it's such an interesting like path and, and, and perspective. Like, it's just so cool. And I want to know what mine are now. I'm curious too. I'm like, Hmm, what notes <gasps> that you have? Oh, know, right? you know what I want to mention about lunar notes since mm. you've gotten to the point where now you're curious what yours are. Yeah. This is a tidbit, a fact. When you find out, you know, your set of nodes, your opposite sign pairing, I call them sets because they come together. They're always these opposite pairings. I believe there's 48 of them. Oh, wow. Like possible, you know, math things. But the lunar nodes move much slower than things like moon phases. So since you're asking about moon phases, those move, you know, every day, the moon is in a different phase, technically, and those cycles are about a month. And the lunar nodes, these points move real slow. They move every 18 months, they switch signs. And so that means that anyone who is born in the same 18 month window, they share the same node set by sign, not by house. And that makes them sort of like soul buddies. You have the same um, life mission themes and things like that. 
makes me think of like high school classes <laughs> because we know that. all those people have the same node set. So they're all trying to do the same thing at the same time. So I wanted to mention that it's a slow mover. <laughs> That's a really, really in- interesting point. And now it just makes me think of like everyone that I'm connected to, what are all of their nodes? Yeah. Because, like, it's funny because it's like, you see so many people who are doing similar things, especially mm-hmm. online in yeah. business and that kind of thing. And yeah. everyone's kind of around the same age looks like. So I'm just like, hold, yeah. hold the phone here. Like, <laughs> That's I true. absolutely love that. I love that. How can people... I guess more so from like a counseling perspective, okay. how can they start to move through some of the challenges that they might be facing or feeling? And is there anything that you would recommend just from like maybe an astrology perspective or something that you would look at to help them move through that? Well, I would first of all say it depends on the challenge, what to look at astrologically, True. because certain placements relate more to certain areas of life. Mm. which is often um, one of the main roles of an astrologer as well, is to pull out the placements that are most relevant to the challenges or the concerns, because some help more than others, like wouldn't be super helpful if someone had a relationship concern for me to maybe bring up their Neptune, which is like your dreamy spiritual self or something. Oh. Or, <laughs> so that's a bit of part of it is something that, I would do is find the related piece in astrology but something that I hear a lot actually when I'm working in lunar nodes is that folks are having challenges or like persistent blocks or obstacles that just keep happening or they've gotten really stuck on one in particular Mm. and they're kind of chilling in a rut and that's the challenge Mm. and they just don't know why and so they can't seem to get out of it without knowing the root the reasoning there And the counseling astrology combo is helpful there because we can dive into it through a counseling lens, look through, you know, what's going on in childhood? Where are we at here? How's your mother? Things like that. And through the astrological lens, we can use it to become aware of what's back there, of what's set up in this chart that might, I don't know, predispose you or create these scenarios for you Mm -hmm. and sometimes even just the awareness of these things either the awareness that they're represented in a mathematical chart or the awareness of where the root is and the patterns are Mm -hmm. Um, just being able to see them clearly and actually you know feel and understand the reason why they've got into this challenge itself is revolutionary for them sometimes just knowing (laughs) you know you can feel really foggy and confused when you hit weird blocks and you're like what the heck is that why why me what is it it's so nice to sometimes just have awareness of oh this is a pattern and here it is in black and white and this is what I can do about it also in black and white Mm. and awareness is huge in most spiritual and astrological practices as something Mm. that's pivotal (laughs) I agree when you've got a challenge and you're not aware of it it will you know (laughs) it can be detrimental like it can it blocks you and so would you equate this to in some sense to like limiting beliefs almost like you have these like stories that play in your mind and you know yeah, on the node set, but sometimes, true, yeah, true, makes a lot <laughs> of sense. The person and the challenge, of course, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's all an inner situation going on, blocking yourself, and sometimes mm-hmm. it's a weird karmic loop with your family. <laughs> so true. <laughs> There's so many reasons why we hit our challenges, but definitely, for sure. <laughs> so cool. I absolutely love this. This is so interesting, and I want to just know all of mine now. I want to know too. (laughs) I know, right? I'm like, do I, can I just Google this? Like, I think I'll find it. Maybe, maybe Maybe. I'll just have to talk to you. I don't know. Yeah, do it. That'd be fun. That would be so fun. So fun. Guess what your notes are. (laughs) I know, right? I am too. I am too. Um, BP, this is my last question for you. Okay. And it's a question that I ask all my guests when they come onto the show. And it's how can someone create a little more happiness in their day every day starting today Hmm. I'm gonna say first of all 
look at your birth chart, but mm. I'm kind of half joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes. Look at it. <laughs> I'm half joking, Just because that brings me happiness in my day when I'm looking <laughs> through charts and astrology things. But besides that, one of the things in my life that's made me a happier human is radical self-acceptance. Mm. Because as we've been talking about, all this awareness of karmic blocks or even our soul path, all of this awareness is there in charts and counseling, lots of things. Lots of things come up. You suddenly know a lot about what's going on. And holding those then with this like free radical acceptance mm-hmm. of what is actually there makes everything so much better <laughs> rather than placing the judgments on the things that you've become aware of about self. It's a beautiful practice, even in my own personal day to day, just accepting everything that's cooking up in here. Mm-hmm. I love that so much. It's so important. And I think that it brings you so much inner peace and strength because you're so accepting of everything that makes you you. 100%. Everything feels that. better when you love you, or at the very least, if you're not at that state where you don't feel like you love you, you know, this day may be a hard day and you're not your biggest fan, (laughs) or you've done something you don't like that you did, I still find that radical self-acceptance in those moments relieves so much of the ick. (laughs) I love (laughs) Just allows it to be, and that makes me happy in my life. Oh, I love that so much. That's so beautiful. Where can our listeners find you? Oh, they could find me on Instagram. That's usually where I spend most of my time hanging out, which is at BP online. Actually, it's BP underscore online underscore, but you'll find it if you put BP online. And that's where I post um, astro videos, a little bit of education, sometimes current events, or just my face occasionally. (laughs) And you could also find me on my website, which is lunarcounseling.com, of course. I love that. (laughs) And that's where all the details are about lunar node things and sessions and such. Oh, there's also a free um, PDF on there. I want to mention that. I've had it up for quite a while. Folks seem to like it. Totally free, like no weird strings attached. It just exists on my Instagram and website. And it's actually about the lunar nodes. So you can download that and read a little more in depth what we talked about earlier, what they represent and what the point of looking at them is, et cetera. And that's totally free if people want to scoop it up. Mm, I love that. I'm going to put all those links in the show notes so that everyone can access everything so much easier. Wonderful. Thank you. (laughs) Love it. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for everything related to my technology issues today. (laughs) I'm glad it was a result. Yes. I'm (laughs) glad we got to talk. This was really fun. Can I ask you one quick question? Of course. Of course. What's your sun sign? You want to (laughs) guess? Gemini or Sagittarius? Sagittarius. (laughs) (laughs) Got it. Excellent. Do you know your rising and moon? Yes. Hold on. I'm checking. Hold on. Sorry, guys. We're checking. nosy. (laughs) No, no, no. Not at all. I have it on this co-star app that reminds me all the time. Um, (laughs) Sun in Sagittarius, moon in Libra, ascendant in Scorpio, Mercury in Sagittarius. Do you have a lot of Sagittarius in there? Venus in Libra, Mars in Sagittarius, Jupiter in Virgo, Saturn in Aquarius. Oh, a couple Capricorn. Those are generational. You're in the same Saturn return cycle as me. Go team. (laughs) Interesting. My Saturn return was last Monday, two Mondays ago. Yeah, in December situation, right? December. Someone told me that it was, I had this like reading done and they told me that it was on January 11th, uh, January 12th, no, 11th. For when Saturn switched into Aquarius? Yeah. Mm, mm -mm. No? December, December, I think the 17th was when Saturn moved into Aquarius for sure. Interesting. But that could be another transit that they're referring to that was similar. No, they said Saturn return. (laughs) Well, Saturn has returned to Aquarius <laughs> for the next three years, and uh, it's going to sit there. So that's in both our charts. It's oof, quite an ordeal. <laughs> Is it? Oh, oh yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> is a thing. <laughs> Don't just leave me hanging like that, BP. Okay. Well, you'll have to you'll have to check out the IGTVs about it, right? <laughs> I absolutely will. I should already be on there doing that to learn or, all um, of the things. I'll just I'll just tell you later. <laughs> Sounds good. (laughs) Amazing. Thank you so much for for coming on and for your incredible insight today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm glad we did it. (laughs) Me too. Me too. And thank you so much, everyone, for tuning into the podcast this week. Please let us know how much you love this episode. Be sure to connect with us both on Instagram so we can know that you're listening. And reach out to BP if you want anything if you want to learn anything about your lunar nodes and anything astrology related because I know she'll be happy to help so (laughs) right yes please (laughs) I love that amazing okay guys have a great week ahead and remember that happiness happens when you're least expecting it well it looks like we've made it to the end of this episode I'm so grateful for you tuning into this week's episode and I cannot wait to see you over on the next one if you loved this conversation and this topic as much as I did please feel free to leave us a rating or a review wherever you're listening it takes just a second and it is so important for us so that we can make sure to deliver this content to those who need it I'm wishing you the most beautiful day wherever you are in the world and remember that happiness happens when you're least expecting it.